particular form is an employee suggestion form. It was created in InfoPath and then published to SharePoint. The form has a built-in approval process with three levels of approval that you will be able to define. So let's go ahead and take a look at this form. To create a new form, I'm just going to click New Document. And then here I can enter my name, department, phone number, email. And then I can enter in what my suggestion is. I have a second field here where I can put in what my suggestion will accomplish and or improve. So then once I get that all entered, I can go ahead and hit submit. And then if I look at my form in the form library, I can see I have an approval status and a next approver. So in this particular form, the next approver is an HR rep and the approval status is HR. So if I was the HR rep, I could go ahead and open this form. And then now I can see what the employee entered in a read-only format. And then I have a few things that I need to fill out, and then I can improve. So here I can put in the due date for this suggestion. I can assign it an ID, and then put comments. And then when I'm done, I just click Approve. I can see here it's moved to the next approval status, which is VP. So essentially, the VP would receive an email with a link directly to this form. When they open up the form, they see that same read-only view of what the employee submitted. And then they can see exactly what HR entered. They can see it was approved by the person in HR and on what day. And then down here they have some additional fields they can fill out. Now of course we can customize what these questions are, but just to give you a general idea, this is asking the VP what are the potential problems or issues concerned with implementing the suggestion? Is there a better solution than what the employee has suggested? Does the cost outweigh the potential savings? How soon is the payback? How long will the suggestion take to implement? And then finally, should this suggestion be implemented? So they can fill this out. I'm just going to check this one. They can enter why or why not, put in any additional comments, and then they can approve. And then the form moves to the last level of approval, which is the CEO. So then the CEO opens the form, sees everything that was done before. They can enter in comments and then hit approve. And now the form is completed, so essentially an email can be sent to the requester or the employee. They can open up the form, they see a read-only view of everything, and they can actually see the comments that were made, and that it was approved, and on what day. Now let's take a look at what happens when a form is rejected. So here we have the same form only it's returned to that first level of approval, which is the HR rep. So let's say the HR rep opens the form, and let's say they look at this and they decide that for whatever reason they need to reject this suggestion. Let's say more information is needed. So they're going to go ahead and reject this form. And then what will happen is an email will be sent to the requester It'll let them know that the form has been rejected, as we can see here the approval status is rejected. And then it pulls whatever the comment was from the HR rep, it pulls that into the form comment field so that the requester can see what the problem was. And then if needed, they can open up the form. They see that it was rejected and that more information was needed, and then they can click Originator, Modify, and Resubmit. They get back into the editing screen for the form. And let's say they can add in details and then hit submit. It will then return to the HR HR rep and then they can choose to approve it. This would be the same process no matter if it was 
rejected on the first level of approval, the second, or the third. Anytime that it's rejected, they'll be able to modify and resubmit.